Welcome to Electron Online, and here is the two phase diagrams, one for, for uh, water and one for carbon dioxide, side by side as comparison. And without labeling, labeling them, you should be able to tell the difference. Now, the general shape is the same, but you should notice one basic difference between the two. On the carbon dioxide, the line that goes between the solid and the liquid is sloped to the right. It has a positive slope. On this one here, we have the solid on the left and we have the liquid to the right. And notice here that the line dividing the solid from the liquid phase is sloped this way. It has a negative slope. That is extremely unique. Almost no substances have this and that makes water so special. What that means is that when water freezes from liquid to solid, it will actually expand. Most every other substance, when it goes from liquid to solid, it contracts, it, gets, it has a, a more dense state, it takes up less volume. Water ice takes up more volume than water. All other substances, when they freeze, they tend to take up less volume. Now, why is that? Well, we'll see that in just a moment. Now, also realize that this is the vapor phase. This is the vapor phase. And let's take a look at some more of the fundamental properties of these, of these phase diagrams. Both of them have a triple point. Right here is a triple point for water. There's a triple point for carbon dioxide. Again, at those points, all three phases, solid, liquid, and vapor, can exist at the same time in the same container. Here, all three phases, solid, liquid, and vapor, can exist at the same time in the same container right there. But notice that the triple point for water is, occurs at a really, really, really low pressure. So the pressure has to be extremely low. Matter of fact, what's kind of unique here is that this is pretty well the atmospheric pressure on Mars. So on Mars, at a particular temperature, you could actually have all three phases of water exist. That would exist, that would happen at a temperature of 0 0.01 degrees centigrade above the freezing point. So at this temperature and at this pressure, all three phases of water can exist. For carbon dioxide, you need a pressure of 5.11 atmospheres and at a temperature of minus 56.4 degrees centigrade for that to happen. So what that means is, uh, notice that until you get up to the triple point, liquid cannot exist. You have to have a pressure um, that is greater than that for liquid to exist. And here on the Earth, you have to have a pressure greater than that for liquid water to exist, which is a good thing, because if you needed something at very high pressure, then liquid water, if liquid water looked like this, it couldn't exist at pressures below five atmospheres, so you wouldn't have any liquid water on the Earth. All right, also you can see that um, at one atmosphere, which is atmospheric pressure on the Earth, water will freeze or melt, depending upon which way you go, left to right or right to left, at zero degrees centigrade. Also, you can see that at one atmosphere, you have a phase change between vapor and liquid, so that's when water begins to boil. What happens when the atmospheric pressure drops, like when you go to higher elevations? Well, when the atmospheric pressure drops, that means the water will boil at a lower temperature below 100 degrees centigrade. For, for uh, carbon dioxide, and I might, I might as well label this one CO2, now that you know the difference, notice that uh, at pressures that are equal to atmospheric pressure right here, one atmosphere, you can only have the vapor phase and the solid phase for carbon dioxide. And so when the temperature drops below 78.5 degrees centigrade, at an atmospheric pressure, again, this is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, the, the carbon dioxide will go from a vapor to a solid. And at, temp at temperatures greater than 78.5 degrees or minus 78.5 degrees, carbon dioxide will go from solid back to the vapor. Notice that in order to go from, so, from vapor to solid and at temperatures that are greater than 78.5 degrees, you just will require more and more and more pressure. At the point that you get to minus 56.4 degrees centigrade, you'll need a pressure of 5.11 atmospheres. All right, now let's try to figure out why water expands when it, um, when it freezes. Well, I'm going to take a look at it slightly different. Let's for a moment say that we have a solid, and let's say we have a solid here at a pressure below one atmosphere, 
And so you could have a temperature greater than zero degrees centigrade at a lower than one atmosphere pressure. Or maybe why not I just start at something we're more familiar with. Let's start at one atmosphere and the water begins to freeze. Now let's say that the temperature cools down to maybe a few degrees below uh, freezing point right there and you can see we're now in the solid state. What happens now when you begin to add more and more and more pressure to the ice? So you start increasing the pressure, start increasing the pressure, start increasing the pressure and what happens at some point the solid will turn back into a liquid. You can actually liquefy ice by putting enough pressure on it, which is amazing. No other substance is like that. If you have a solid and you keep on applying more and more pressure, it definitely is not going to turn into a liquid. Water, on the other hand, does do that because of its interesting relationship here. So you start increasing the pressure on ice and the ice will actually turn into a liquid. That means that liquid has a more condensed state because when you add pressure to a substance you actually reduce the volume, you actually increase the density and if you push enough on the ice so where you exceed a certain limitation you actually compress it back into a liquid state which is very strange. Likewise when you go when you have a liquid at a very high pressure and then you start reducing the pressure eventually the liquid will then turn back into ice because ice it is uh, greater in, uh, in volume, takes up more volume, it's less dense. So ice, in order for liquid to turn to ice, it has to have the extra space to, to turn back into ice. It has to be able to expand and as you reduce the pressure going from a very high pressure at liquid state, you can see that the ice finally can start pushing back and start taking up more volume and turn that liquid back into ice. And that is part of the reason why this curve is drawn this way rather than drawn this way in most other substances. So there you go, there you have a, a quick review on the phase diagrams of two substances. Notice that even though the, the critical point and the triple point may be in different locations for all the other substances, the vast amount of substances have phase diagrams that look like this with the line between liquid and solid pointing to the right having a positive slope. Water on the other hand has this very unique situation where instead of the, the line between liquid and solid going like this, it goes to the left right here, it actually has a negative slope, which means that water will expand when it freezes, unlike all other substances.